let's talk about continuity. Now, I want to draw a couple pictures to give you the basic idea before I give you the definition. So let's say you have some function that looks like this. And here's the point A. This is one example. That's a continuous function at A. And then let me draw a different picture. Here's A. And let's say you go like this to like this. Okay. Now this function on the left, this is continuous at A, basically because I can draw it without lifting my pen off the paper. But this function on the right is not continuous because in order to draw it, I have to lift my pen off the paper and then continue drawing it like that. So um, that would not be continuous. And the way that we're going to formally define it is we are going to define it. There's three pieces to the definition. So the first piece is that you need f of a um, you need that to be defined. So f of a is defined. The second part of the definition is that when you take the limit as x goes to a of f of x, this limit exists. Then the third um, requirement is that the limit as x goes to a of f of x must equal to f of a. Okay, so um, if you look at this second picture over here, the limit does not exist because you get two different numbers as you come from the left and you come from the right. So here's an example where the limit does not exist. We can see the third part failing with the following picture. Let's say you have your function looks like this. There's a hole, it continues, and your function is defined up there. And this is A. So in this particular case, um, when we look at the limit, the limit exists, and the limit is right here. But it's not equal to the function value, right? So in this third drawing, the limit exists, but is not equal to f of a, because f of a is actually above over here. So I hope you can see that when I try to draw this guy, I can't draw the graph without lifting my pen off the paper in order to complete the graph. All right. So, um, we will look at some examples in class. Let me uh, give you a few theorems about continuity. So the first theorem we have involves polynomials and rational functions. And basically our theorem says polynomials and rational functions are continuous on their domains. OK, so anytime you have a, a polynomial or rational function, continuity questions are basically domain questions. Continuity questions are basically domain questions. So for example, if you were to take a look at example four, it says for what values of x is this function f of x equal to x minus four over x plus two continuous? This is really a domain question. So there's two things that can go wrong. One thing is you have a negative under a square root, an even index square root. We don't have any square roots here, so you don't have to worry about that. But the second thing that can go wrong is we can't have zeros in the denominator. Zero in 
v denominator, right? So I can set x plus 2 equal to 0, and then when I solve for x, I get x is equal to negative 2. So the values where x is continuous is really going to be from negative infinity to negative 2. We want to throw away that point, and then we want to continue from negative 2 to positive infinity. So there's just one point where um, the function is not defined. Oops, let me fix that highlighter color to be yellow. All right, cool. There are three main ways that a function can be discontinuous. So discon discontinuous means it's, it's not continuous, okay? The first type of discontinuity is something called the removable discontinuity. Okay, so with a removable discontinuity, your picture might look something like this. You know, here's A, you might have a hole in your graph like that. And what could happen is you can remove it. You can make it continuous by plugging that hole in right there. So this picture represents a removable discontinuity. The second type of discontinuity we have is something called the jump discontinuity. Now a jump discontinuity might look something like this. You know, you have your A over here, your graph looks like it's going to one place, then suddenly it jumps, and then it's going somewhere else. The third type of discontinuity is we call it infinite discontinuity. And that occurs when you know, you have some sort of an asymptote. So maybe your picture looks like this, you know, maybe it goes up like this and up like this, but it sort of shoots off to infinity at the point A, okay? Uh, we could also, you know, it could also look something like this. You know, here's A. You could sort of have one side going to positive infinity, another side going to negative infinity. That would also be a infinite discontinuity. All right, cool. Uh, again, we will work on examples in class. Uh, in this video, I really just want to get a lot of the theory out of the way. And I know that when I show you the examples in class, it'll all be a little bit clearer. This will just make things go a little bit more smoothly for us. So when we talk about continuous from the left, we can express continuity from the left as a limit. So that's going to be the limit as x approaches a from the negative side of f of x. And that happens to be equal to f of a. OK, so I want you to look at this picture we have on the right. Can you see? which point is continuous from the left? Well, if I look at this value of one over here, um, when I come from the left, where the function looks like it's going is six. What the function actually is equal to is six. So this part right here, at x equal to one, this is continuous from the left, okay? Let's define continuous from the right. You can probably guess that's going to be the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x must equal to f of a. So let's take a look at our x value of 1 again. When I come from the right, where does it look like the function's going? It looks like it's going to 3. But what is the function actually equal to? The function's actually equal to 6. So at the point 1, at x equal to 1, this is not continuous from the right. So maybe I'll have to put a little note there. Not continuous from the right at x equal to 1. And up here I could say it's continuous 
from the left at x equal to 1. Okay. It's going to be continuous on an interval i if f of x is continuous at every point in your interval i. So if we were to look at this picture right here, if I look from negative 2 to 1, my function is continuous um, from negative 2 to 1 like this. So the way that I would write it is I could say, you know, f of x is continuous on the interval from negative 2 to 1. Now, I don't want to include negative 2 because there's an open circle there, so I'm going to put a round bracket. But I do want to include 1 because it's continuous from the left at 1. So I'm going to put a square bracket like this. All right? Cool. So um, the final thing I want to mention on the first part of this worksheet is there are certain types of functions that are continuous on their domains. We've already seen two of them. The two that we saw were uh, polynomials and rational functions. But it turns out that root functions and trig functions these guys are also continuous on their domains. OK, the last thing I want to mention to you is something called the com composite function theorem. So if f of x is continuous, continuous at L, and the limit of g of x is equal to L, then the limit as x goes to a of f of g of x, this is going to be equal to f of the limit as x goes to a of g of x. And since that limit goes to l, this is equal to f of l. So this is basically saying if the outside function is continuous, we can move the limit inside. All right. All right, everyone. We will work through a whole bunch of examples when we meet together in class. Take care.